guys, so I just remodeled this fireplace. I'll show a picture here of what it used to look like. Of course, now you can see what I've done to it. So we did kind of this whitewash slash German schmear. I think a German schmear is a little bit heavier, so this is more of a whitewash. Um, these bricks were very much... Um, so some bricks have a lot of character. There's a lot of different colors in there and textures, and it, it it looks really good. These are more the other kind of brick that it's just kind of, it looks orange, and it's all one color. It's like perfectly smooth. There's, it, it just looks terrible. So we were trying to dress this up, and so I did just a light coat of mortar washing on this, and I basically, to do this, I just rubbed it on, mixed up some mortar. Um, mortar you can is just basically um, what they use to stick tiles onto stuff. So you just find some that's white and just get the cheapest stuff and it'll work great. And you just rub it on and then um, I took like an old t-shirt and just kind of wipe it off um, as best as I could. And I, for these kind of joints in here, what I did is I put it in a large one gallon Ziploc bag, bag the mortar in there, cut off a, the corner of the Ziploc, and then I just kind of squeezed it in here. That way I could avoid getting very much on these bricks, and then I could just barely dab on here. Make sure you wear gloves because the stuff um, really dries out your hands. And um, So you just put that on there, and um, yeah, the mortar wash was, it took me longer, I mean, it's like a full op day, so about eight hours. So then for this, this was gold, this um, fireplace space, and so I painted it, um, made sure I used high temp paint. Um, usually I don't recommend painting hardware and stuff because it doesn't really last. This is about two years worth of wear, kind of has that brushed bronze look now. Um, so it's not wearing too bad. So if you are painting hot hardware, make sure it's hardware you don't use a lot because the paint just won't hold up like the factory finish. Um, so I did that. I painted these vents all uh, with that high temp paint as well. And uh, fireplaces like this actually put out a ton of heat. Uh, the old style fire fireplace without the vents like this didn't put out much heat, but this is basically a wood stove. It's a big metal box back there, and all that heat sucks air in the bottom vents and kicks it out the top, and a fireplace like this will heat our house, like, no problem. Um, so, and then I had, um, I was looking at maybe putting stone down for uh, these areas here, because they were just kind of open, the top of the bricks, lots of holes. Um, it, it just looked terrible. So I need to put something down here. And I looked at doing like marble or um, slate or, or some sort of countertop material. And everything was pretty pricey. And, you know, this fireplace isn't in our living room or anything. Um, it, it's not something that we want to, uh, as a focus point. So we were looking for a more of a budget option. So I was looking at, you know, co concrete, concrete countertops. You know, people put it on their kitchen counter, should be good enough for a hearth, and I can custom mold it. So I'll show you guys in video coming up here on how I made these. And pretty simple. Um, I would not recommend concrete countertops. They really just don't hold up. I mean, they will hold up, but they will scratch and they will look terrible in a year. Um, so unless you're, um, you'd like that very rustic, chipped, scratched, um, uh, different colored, flaky look, then I would not recommend countertops, granite countertops. All the pictures you see um, are on like day one when they made them, but um, watch some videos of some follow-ups like two years later or something, and people don't really recommend it. Um, so these have a little bit of porosity in them and um, most of the countertops, the DIY countertops do, um, you want to spray your mold with concrete if you 
want to avoid porosity like this. But, you know, at first I hated it, but now I've gotten used to it, and I don't mind this porosity. Um, it, I definitely wasn't worth it to me to hire a professional um, to, with the proper spray gun to get the, spray the mold before you put the concrete in to avoid all those little voids. Um, so I'm very pleased with how it came, came out. Um, I also made this hearth. Um, this is just some uh, crown molding here, and then I bought a slab of um, slab, a, a piece of wood for the top, and just cut it to size, and you know, chop sawed the corners, and it turned out really good. I mortared it in place, put some two by fours in there um, to uh, just kind of hold it together. Put it down a mortar bed, and just kind of sunk this thing in place, and I think it dresses up real good. Um, if I did this again, I would, so I used some finish nails to attach this in a few spots and then I mixed up um, what you can do when you have holes, pinholes or something, you want to fill them in, you take wood glue and you take sawdust from that wood and you mix it up into like a, a toothpaste consistency and you could fill the holes and then it matches real good. The downside is when you go to varnish this afterwards, it doesn't stick to where the wood glue is. So you'll notice it's a little discolored there, but eh, we'll call it rustic or something. Uh, adds character, right? So I would avoid using that wood glue. It's better just to see the hole where the, you use the brad nailer um, than to uh, try to fill it and make it disappear because it makes it stand out more, um, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, th this cost about 50 bucks, and these cost about 50 bucks, and uh, the mortar wash is like another 20 bucks, so uh, pretty affordable. I also have this lower section that was just concrete down here, and I wasn't sure what to do with this. It's like I could put tile on it, because it just looks like concrete, but instead I just took that mortar wash and I rubbed it into the concrete. And it looks real good. It just makes it white and blend in, kind of ties it in with this mortar wash up here. The other thing, the reason we mortar wash this is all these were gray cement joints, and it just looked terrible. Like it looked, I don't know, more industrial. We're kind of, our house, we're kind of going for the cottagey look, and so this kind of gives that a look. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how I made these real quick, and so. We'll go to there. All right, so mixing cement. Um, I bought the high strength uh, concrete mix, uh, sackcrete. So, you know, this is like Portland cement, but it has the sand and the rock already in it. Um, I'm going to try to get one bucket mixed up here, the entire bag in there. So, we'll see how that works. It might be too much for the bucket, but I really want to mix everything at, at what time so that I'm not doing several different pours because the color could be different each time. And then I'm mixing this cement color quickcrete, and I got this off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description here. And uh, this stuff runs, I think it's just under five bucks, so pretty cheap. Um, this will do two bags of concrete, but I'm just probably going to put almost the whole thing in there. So I decided that that bucket is definitely too small to mix up, mix up a full bag, so I'm going to dump it into the wheelbarrow and do it by hand. So I don't know, I don't know if you guys can see this, this is sort of the texture it is. Um, you don't want it too wet because it can crack, it's a little stronger um, if you do it dry. This is almost too wet, uh, ideally you'd have it a little bit drier than that. So it's just kind of, I mean, you can kind of see the texture there. So here I've made my mold. Um, this is like, oh, there's different names for it, but I think it's like Velomeme or Melomeme. I think it's Melomeme. Um, but it's basically at like Home Depot or Lowe's in your like closet section. They make shelves and stuff. It's basically two plastic sheets that have been bonded onto like some particle board. Um, 
but it's really great because it's very very smooth and it's super cheap so I had this stuff lying around from some shelves we tore out so I ran through the table saw made these little side panels and I screwed them on and then you take silicone and I just ran a bead of silicone all along the inside edge here and here. And then I took a pen, like a ballpoint pen, pulled the caps off so I just had this tube. And I used that to kind of shape that radii. And you run that through there like that. And then you get a nice radius. But it lead, And then you just let it dry. And then when you run that tube through, it leaves two little bumps on either side of the radius and once everything's dried you could just peel those off really easily and that leaves just the radius in there so that works really good make sure you cut these corners at 45 so you got uh, a nice inside seam here um, and yeah also uh, be very picky about your mold getting it perfect perfect size um, because um, you're gonna hate yourself later if it's not. Um, also, make sure it's super clean. I mean, you might think, well, I'm throwing a bunch of dirty concrete in here, and uh, it doesn't really matter. But it, if if you got little stuff in here, it's gonna really show up. Also, when you buy your concrete, if you decide to go with the fibrous uh, concrete, which has like little pieces of fiberglass in there, some people like that, but keep in mind that when you pop your mold, you're going to see it. And um, if you don't like looking like your countertops or whatever are covered in uh, little pieces of hair, then it's probably you want to go with something without fiber in it. So let's throw this concrete in here and see how it goes. I also, once I'll throw in the screen afterwards, this is just some uh, old fencing that I had lying around that I cut to size. So I'm just kind of working this down in here. I want to make sure that I get it pressed into that radii so it fills that out. Um, by rubbing, rubbing it and kind of vibrating it, uh, it'll cause the liquid to go down and uh, make a nice smooth surface so that it doesn't look like that when you pop your mold. Then I can use my board to kind of screen off. Now I just happen to have almost exactly the right amount of cement. but if you're short a little, it's not a big deal. Um, what you just do is push your colored concrete to the outside, mix up, mix up a quick batch of non-colored concrete, and just put that in the center here. And that works real good, because you'll never see it. Now we can just let that dry. So I'll wait probably five, five days, and then I'll pop the mold. But I've already got some that I've already done, so I'll show you those. All right, so we just finished pouring these things. They've sat for about eight days. I hear that five to seven days is kind of the sweet spot um, where they're still kind of soft. So let's crack these guys open and see what we've got. All right, so that's the first one off. As you can see, it has a slight amount of voids in here. We've got these nice radii on the side. So it's nice and rounded all the way around because of that silicone in there. Um, so some people like this look. If you don't like it, like I don't, because, um, I don't know, I like things looking perfect. Um, I'm going to mix up a slurry and rub it in here and see how that looks. So now that I have my blocks here with a slight amount of porosity in it, I want to fill in that porosity. Now, ideally you would take like uh, that concrete and you'd sift out the rocks and stuff so that it's really fine, or you can use Portland cement, uh, but then you would have to try to dye it the exact same color. So I'm just going to use leftovers that I still had mixed up from that last slab I just poured, and I'm going to rub it in here, and I'll just rub off the rocks and let the fine stuff kind of work its way into that porosity. And hopefully I'll have enough to do all this. Now I'm just going to sc sc 
screen off the extra um, little pieces of stuff on there so that uh, it gets back to the original super smooth surface that we worked so hard to get. Um, and then I'm going to sand these afterwards, but I don't want to do much sanding, so I want to try to clean off as much junk right now as possible. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know normally I give you guys paragliding uh, videos of me flying around through the sky, but this is something different. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you guys want to follow me through my complete house remodel, um, turning our kind of rustic home into more of a cottage, uh, yeah, hit subscribe and I'll keep you guys updated. we got a lot of work coming our way here, so uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.